So th thank you very much. So I'm Christophe Cognard from Toulouse, uh, south of France, and indeed I am an interventional uh, neuroradiologist and neuroradiologist, which is a difficult position in this audience here. It's not that easy to, to, to be interventional neuroradiologist. Uh, so I'm, the title of my presentation is Prombectomy in Stroke Can Only Be Performed by Neuroradiologist or Neurologist. Uh, and when I saw the title of my presentation, I was wondering if I should come. <laughs> and it was the same as last year. So last year, the title of my presentation was Trombectomy like Stroke, Regulatory Perspective and Training Requirements, so more or less the same, probably less political in the way it was presented. So finally, I, I realized that I'm invited you know, to play the role of the, the, the bad guy, you know, the neurointerventionist defending the lobby of neuroscience against the lobby of uh, cardiology, against whom you have to fight. Uh, when I have much more interesting things to discuss with you concerning you know, the acute stroke, uh, the indication of acute stroke, the imaging of acute stroke, the imaging of the thrombus, uh, the decision making, which is sometimes extremely difficult to make in, in minor stroke or major stroke, and the research we do as well on the uh, thrombus composition, we work on the anatomopathology of the thrombus, we work on lipidemic of the thrombus in, in order to try to understand what is the origin of the stroke, depending on the constitution of the thrombus, we remove them from the brain arteries. So I would be very glad to discuss many other things with you, but I have to, to, to De debate and, and do this, let's say, more or less political talk. And, and then I'm, bit, I'm a bit upset by that, and I, I would say if you want to write guidelines saying that an interventional cardiologist can perform thrombectomy after a three months training or, or some point after three weeks training, you, you can do it and you can go in front of the UEMS and say, okay, we, we ESC is extremely powerful and will be extremely powerful regarding the EMS, UEMS. So you can do it, but we will never accept you know, such uh, uh, a short training. Uh, and, and indeed, our, our uh, board, and which is the European Board of Neurointervention, has been working a lot on this topic. So this board was established in 2016. The mission is to develop uh, standards of practice and training and, observe and develop an overseer accreditation system in the field of neurointervention. The point is that in this board, it's a multidisciplinary board where there are one neuroradiologist, two interventional neurologists, uh, another interventional neurologist which, who is neurologist uh, and representing the ESO, a neurosurgeon representing the EANS. So it's indeed a neuroscience board. But there is a vacant seat for the, someone from the CIRC. CIRC is vascular radiologist. It's a very big society. And they want to participate as well to the thrombectomy activity. And there, were, there is a seat as well for an ESC member. The only point is that these cardiologists should be properly trained to enter the board and then participate to the board. So there, there is nothing against cardiologists, if you trust me. Uh, so we have already written a few uh, papers and many guidelines. And then there is the, the guidelines concerning the, the, the training and the acquiring competence in endovascular interve neurointervention. So this is our field. And because we fit with the UEMS, we don't care about the specialty in origin. People have to be a doctor and a specialist. That's it. You can be a dermatologist and, and start a training in neurointervention. Uh, so if you want to become a full neurointerventionist, you have to do four years of training, and which is two years of practice, no interventions, but before or after or during, you have to learn the, the brain. So the point is that you have to do 12 months of clinical neuroscience and 12 months of uh, imaging and neuroradiology. For, for example, the, the fellows, or my resident, they are radiologists, but they start doing six months neurology, six months neurosurgery, and then they start uh, working in the neuroradiology field. So then there are numbers as well that you have to fulfill to become uh, uh, validated as a neurointerventionist, as a, prime, a second operator, as well as principal operator, then there are numbers. So then we were discussing a lot in our group to uh, decide or not to decide to have a specific pathway uh, for people doing only thrombectomy. And we were a bit reluctant initially because if you 
people only learn how to remove a clot from the brain, and they have a complication, they cannot manage the complication. If you have a bleed, if you rupture an artery, you, you have a dissection, you have many things that you have to be able to manage, injecting glue in the brain, placing coins, or whatever. But finally, because there is an urgent need, and we agree on that, that we have more people doing this uh, thrombectomy uh, procedures, we are saying, okay, let's, let's train people at the lower level, but it will be good for the, the patient care. So there is a specific pathway, which is two years instead of four. Uh, and in these two years, we have 12 months of practice, interventional neuroradiology, six months of clinical neuroscience. Again, it's impossible that the radiologist knowing nothing about the brain will start doing thrombectomy when he doesn't know the organ. Uh, and same, you have to do imaging as well. And then depending on what you have done before, you can reduce your two years to one year if you are a neurologist and you have already done neuroscience and neuroradiology, it's only one year. Same for the, the, the uh, other neuroscience specialties. And then you have numbers as well as second or principal operator. But then you have a standard of practice as well document saying that normally those thrombectomy should be performed in, let's say, full uh, endovascular neuroradiology centers. Uh, except if, you know, there is no centers uh, in proximity, and then you can create a new center. So we can imagine that a radiologist or a cardiologist can create a new center. The conditions are that these centers should be more than one kilometer away from an existing center, more than one hour, and with a minimum workload of 150 stroke, meaning 150 thrombolysis a year. If not, you will, the, the caseload will be too short. It ideally, you need, you need a department of neurosurgery, or you can contract with a department of neurosurgery which should be less than one, half an hour away from your center. Two weeks, two days ago, we did the, the thrombectomy. It went well, everything went open, but it was a major stroke. And two hours later, the patient had to get a, a, a craniectomy immediately after the thrombectomy. So you need surgeons. You need to have a 24-7 uh, uh, opening of the center, for sure, and a minimum of eight, uh, uh, eight, 80 thrombectomy cases per institution, saying that you need to be at least three to be on call every night. So if you are three people doing 80 thrombectomy, it's a very few thrombectomy per year per operator. So this was the Euro European situation. Now you have the US situation, uh, and, and they recently all agree on a specific training, and it was driven by the Society of Neurological Surgeons. Uh, and in these uh, guidelines from the US, it's one year of uh, full-time neurointervention, but after a very uh, important prerequisite to become, to enter this uh, training. So if you are a neurosurgeon or if you are a neurologist, you have to do at least six months of a stroke or clinical care fellowship. If you are a radiologist, you have to learn at least for six months uh, a neurology and, and stroke or neurointensive care pro program. So the idea is to be multidisciplinary. Okay? The, a, a radiologist or a cardiologist who don't know the brain should not work. So you have to understand the brain, the brain imaging, and then learn the intervention. And then you have very important uh, preliminary subspecialty training that are described for surgeons, radiologists, and radiologists, uh, as well as an endovascular prerequisite training before you enter this uh, pathway, and then the advanced endovascular training with the, the minimum number of cases you are supposed to do before you get validated as neurointerventionist. And then at the end, you must do uh, at least 250 procedures as a primary operator to be validated and certified. So in the world, there is a multi-society document which was published. Uh, and indeed, in these documents as well, the, tr the, the, the training is open only to radiologists, neurologists, and neurosurgeons, and not, not to cardiologists. And I, I understand why you may be sometimes a bit upset by this situation. Uh, so it's a, a one-year training as well, like in the US, in a high volume center dedicated to interventional neurology. But then, and we were discussing that point yesterday, as well, you have a, a need to maintenance of physician qualification. So you have to participate to a national quality improvement registry, and you have to follow those uh, results, which is successful recanalization, the ticket to be three, in at least 60% of the case, embolic in new territory in less than 15%, 
symptomatic intracranial hemorrhage less than 10%. If you are over those numbers, you cannot work anymore. And then you have hospital requirements as well, saying you cannot open a thrombectomy center everywhere. So you, you need to have 24 access to the intracranial fissure, to the dedicated stroke and intensive care unit, to indeed vascular neurology, neurocritical care expertise, to the neurosurgery expertise as well, and already don't know imaging modalities. So to, 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 to sum up rapidly, uh, the training to neurointervention is open to radiologists, neurologists, neurosurgeons in France, Europe, USA, and world guidelines. It's only open to radiologists in Germany, and that is very specific to Germany. But in Europe, uh, it's open to any physician, so including cardiologists, vascular radiologists. So this, I present you then the, the paper which was published like last year, and when the paper came up, I was a bit upset and, and, and embarrassed, and did, I did not know what to do. Uh, I did not know if I should react, and I disagree, and I, I'm going to leave the council. And, uh, uh, so the, the paper is saying that in most of European countries, and, almost, and also most countries in the continent, thrombectomy is not available simply due to a lack of neurointerventional specialists. And for me, it's a fake news. It's true in some countries like Romania, some Central Europe countries, in Russia, indeed, in Russia, 50% uh, of the aneurysms in Russia are treated by cardiologists or oncologists, we don't know exactly. It's true as well in the UK, but it's for specific reason in the UK, and, and the contract the physician has with their own hospital. So UK is a, a unique situation in, in Europe. The other point was said that uh, uh, in, during the Euro PCR last, last year, a few cardiologists experienced in, in stroke treatment wanted to simplify the, the, the training. Uh, in, and speci especially in those areas where no radiology services are either missing or not able to cover 24 7. So it's true that there are areas where 24 7 thrombectomy services are not available, but that is the north of Sweden. That is Norway, that is the middle of Australia, this, this is the flyover US, you know, the middle of the US. In, in Chicago, you have 15 centers doing thrombectomy, which is way too much. In the center of the US, there is no centers because no one wants to work there. It's not a matter of training. Uh, and there are countries where there are already too many centers, because in Germany, you have no radiologists and, and radiologists who, who are trained for one year who do it. So you have more than 100 centers in, in Germany, which is way too much, because then you have centers doing 10 a year. Uh, so the last point is the patient is that no radiologists are not allowing cardiologists to enter the neurospecific training or requiring that a cardiologist should undergo a training in the full spectrum of neurovascular intervention. And that is fake news as well. That is wrong. I mean, cardiologists are more than welcome in Europe, not in the rest of the world, like vascular radiologists as well. And there is a stroke only specific training. So people are not obliged to, to, to uh, learn how to treat aneurysm, brain and whatever. You can have a very uh, specific and short training. So the question is, should interventional cardiologists be trained to protect thrombectomy only in three months? And then if I reverse the question and said, okay, I'm very experienced uh, no interventionist in 25 years, I go in the brain artery every day. Uh, so should I perform coronary intervention after three months training on how to do it? Uh, certainly not. Because I need to, I need to understand the organ, the, the pathology, uh, the imaging, the decision making, the other therapeutics. So you, you, it's not, we are not just pl plumbers. Huh? We, we are doctors and take, take care of an organ. So the question is, do you want interventional cardiologists to become the plumbers of the neurologists? Because the neurologists, they know very well. So when we discuss the indication with neurologists, it's a very difficult discussion. We don't fight at all. We try to find the best decision for the specific patient, and it's sometimes very difficult to do. But if you don't know the, 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 the symptoms, if you don't know the MR, if you don't know the, the brain arteries, you cannot discuss. So you become the plumber of the neurologist, which, okay, take off the, the, the clot and, and you do it. Uh, the other point is, should the 50 years old, I'm 57, huh, interventional cardiology start mm -hmm. doing thrombectomy? Uh, I, I don't think so. I think that the best is to train properly young cardiologists to teach them how to do it well, how to manage complications, 
uh, in one or better two years. So I was supposed to defend, but <laughs> I was not, uh, nobody asked me whether I would agree to defend this position or not. Uh, I don't defend this position. I'm not saying that stroke can only be performed by neuroradiologists or neurologists, not at all. Uh, my point is that thrombectomy should only be performed by physicians who know the clinical symptoms of brain stroke, the brain stroke pathologies, the neuroimaging, the brain vasculature, functional anatomy, thrombectomy techniques, and management of complications. So I don't really understand the point. Uh, I don't wa understand why the ESC would like to have, I would say, low-level cardiologist practicing in desert where nobody else can do it, instead of why not training young cardiologist resident to become high-level cardio neurointerventionist, and this would be much better for the patient presenting a stroke and for the patient treated for cardiac disease as well, then cardiologists will be able to manage their own complications. So I don't know why, you know, I don't think it's the, the point is to train the old people happily to do it. You know, use the young one and train them properly and they will become cardio neurointerventionists. Thank you very much.